Hey, what's up? This is Vernon Francois. How are you doing? Today, I'm going to be taking you guys through how to get a casually fabulous blow dry. Basically, anything with added curls, movement, body, wave, frizzy, thick, Afro-European, Caucasian, you name it. I'm going to be showing you how to get a slick, casually fabulous look. So, I have my model here today, which is B, and she's a casually fabulous everyday lady. Um, and what we're going to be doing today is smoothing out her hair. As you can see from looking and observing what we have here, a lot of people will refer to this hair as mixed race, frizzy, curly, bushy, um, afro hair. Um, and as you can see, it's naturally got a lot of dry, frizzy texture going on. Um, the ends of the hair have actually been pre-coloured already and the roots of the hair are virgin. So what you get with that is a lot of dry frizziness towards the ends of the hair in the middle part. And at the roots you get a lot of density because it's virgin hair so it sits a bit more smoother. Um, what we're going to be doing is showing you guys how to smooth it all out and get a consistent look from the roots to the ends. So then what we're about to do now is apply some product. Product application is extremely important. Once again, it sets a good foundation for a good finish. So the way you apply the product is how the actual hair is going to look when it's finished. Um, what I tend to do is by literally squirting one pump, about that much product. Once again, less is always more. And literally just work it through the whole of your hands and literally just run it through. And from doing that, you're literally getting all the parts of the hair that need the product most, which is the dry, damaged part of the hair. Literally working your hand through once again, and just taking it through the roots, and then through the front section. I, I would advise that you don't always, when you start with product, to put it at the front of the hair. It's the finest part of the hair, and it's the part where he everyday pollution reaches the hair itself, which already adds a lot of dirt. Um, so obviously with that and the actual product on top, it gets really greasy really quickly. And on average, with afro curly hair, wavy frizzy hair, you tend to have to blow dry longer than two to three days because you don't like to wash it out. <laughs> so um, bear in mind, more, less product application will give you a better finish. Um, a brush that I would advise that is really, really good to use on any form of kinky, wavy hair is a paddle brush. Um, the reason being is because the paddle brush is, as you can see, is like a paddle and literally as you brush the hair through it spreads the tension so there's less tension on the hair and avoids your hair from snapping or breaking. Sectioning is also very important, it's a personal thing so however you feel comfortable to section that's how you should section. Uh, how I feel comfortable sectioning is by literally taking a centre parting from the top of the head right round to the back with my tail comb and then literally doing from ear to ear like so. It's really important when you're sectioning, especially with curly or any form of afro hair, that you hold as much water as possible. The last thing you want is to get to your next section and it's already dry. That is going to allow you to overheat the hair and obviously damage the hair. Now I'm about to blow dry, which is really, really exciting. But the brush that you're about to use also makes the blow dry even more exciting. I prefer to use this brush because it gives me maximum movement. One of the reasons why I like to use a bristle brush is because it's got holes that go straight through, which basically heats up the brush from the inside outwards, which therefore acts as an active iron as well as, as, well as while you're blow drying, which hopefully helps you to give you a great finish. It does for me anyway. So as you can see the section that I've taken is quite big from ear to ear. Normally I take sections that are as big as the brush that you're holding, like so. So therefore it can handle the amount of hair that you are actually blow drying. But you've got to bear in mind the, the quantity of the hair as well. So if it's really thick hair then it might be best advised to take a smaller section. From what you could see that I was doing before is I was moving the hair, lifting the hair up with the brush and blow drying from this side and then moving the hair from this side and then obviously blow drying with it down. Also keeping the head forward which basically gives me tension. Once I have the tension the heat just smooths out the cuticle. Um, it's really important I find if you have the hair dryer at a 45 degree angle like so it allows you to smooth the cuticle out a lot easier. If you have the client's head upright at a 90 degree angle and going down on the hair you're more likely to either burn the hair or burn the scalp. And also, you don't get root coverage here. 
So basically, if the head's forward and you go at 45 degrees, you're guaranteed to get the roots smooth, like so, like so, like so. I also always do the roots first, um, as you can see. So now that the roots are done, I can take the rest of the blow dry through the rest of the hair. You don't always have to go to the ends of the hair first. That tends to be the driest part of the hair. So any overheating is obviously going to damage the hair. So I always work from the roots and work downwards. So I finished my first section um, and as you could see the way that I was blow drying that section was in several different ways. The reason being I want to have maximum movement and I want to give my client a lot of flexibility with the hair so she can wear it in many different ways once she leaves me. So as you can see the hair has got a slight wave to it now uh, which is great. When you're doing straight hair it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be bone straight. I call this the casually fabulous blow dryer. <laughs> So there's always got to be some form of movement in there. But um, as you can see, as I was taking the brush through, literally having the brush underneath the hair, so the forms of the brush come straight through, and using the heat to bring that right through, literally curling the brush like so, taking it back up, and then using that to blow dry. Also, I used the same method, but did it reverse. So basically, I put the brush in that way, pulled it all the way down, and then rolled it up, and then use my hair dryer. So that's just how I use the brush. Now I'll show you how I did it with the hair dryer. Always remember to keep the head forward, it's really important. Uh, once again, that gives you the tension that you need without pulling it too much. So, the way you hold the hair dryer, my personal way, is so that it sits literally just behind the hair itself, not on it and not on top, literally just behind it. It's like when you're scorning a ribbon with a pair of scissors and you want to scorn the hair, and then basically that's what you're doing. You just bring it all the way through and roll the brush, like so. And by rolling the brush, it gathers the ends of the hair in, and then literally you can use the heat from the hairdryer like so, not on it, just literally underneath it, which will smooth that out. And you reverse that and do that on top. Like so, and literally have the hair dryer literally there, and just literally by doing that. And what that's going to do is smooth out the ends for you and give you a really nice finish on the hair, as you can see. So, I'm about to do my next section, and basically, I'm going to follow the technique I just explained to you through the rest of the hair. So we finished my casually fabulous blow dry. As you can see, it looks shiny, silky, soft, movement, sexy, hot. So um, less is always more. And you can go from curly to casually fabulous. Shake it.